Today we're talking with Dr. Norton Hadler. He's a rheumatologist at, uh, and researcher at UNC Chapel Hill. And we wanted to talk with him about a concept that we've been thinking a lot about here at the Health Access Coalition, which is the idea that there are a lot of medical procedures that we do in this country where we've done a lot of studies, where we have a lot of evidence, uh, and that evidence shows us that they don't work. And, but we still keep paying for them. So. Dr. Hadler's written a lot of books about this. Uh, he's thought about it, written many, many papers about it, and we wanted to come talk to you about that. Well, I'm glad you did, actually, <laughs> because it is a topic near and dear to my heart, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, what most of us don't talk about is uh, the difference between 21st century medicine and 20th century medicine. Uh, when I started out in medicine some 40 some odd years ago, uh, we had um, a, a lot of preconceived notions and a lot of important people telling us what was the best for our mm -hmm. patients and we tended to be paternalistic. We were doctors and patients listened to us. This is the 21st century and uh, fortunately that time is behind us. It was a time where we did the best we could with very little important evidence mm -hmm. and what's happened now, the best medicine will be something like this. Uh, patients will be the captains of their own ship, they should. You should be in a position to, to make all decisions and they should be fully informed. Uh, there is a science that, that speaks to that question, which is, you've offered me something, Doc, and uh, how certain are you that I'll be benefited by mm -hmm. what you offered me? Not only is there a science, there are scientists around the world who actually collect this information and try to come up with some systematic way of asking how is there evidence for benefit and if there is evidence for benefit how much benefit and if there is studies and no evidence for benefit how certain are you that this is useless mm -hmm. probably the most dramatic or one of the most dramatic examples of this interaction is what's called interventional cardiology the treatment of coronary artery disease and let's take the, the the notion of the coronary artery that's occluded by plaques that is present in the hearts of almost all adults uh, and um, is associated with some likelihood of having the untoward outcomes, heart attacks, mm -hmm. heart failure, and death. And because it was associated with those untoward outcomes early on in, in the history of interventional cardiology, surgeons and cardiologists thought about ways to open up your plugged arteries. Mm -hmm. The, the original way of thinking about that was uh, we can't open them up, but we can bypass them by taking a vessel and going around the blockage. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, we ought to be providing blood to the rest of the heart so that the heart wouldn't be damaged and can go on beating your mm -hmm. full life expectancy. So this is just a heart bypass, what people That's call it's a called the bypass. coronary artery bypass, bypass graph. You seem to have symptoms or you're at risk of having a heart attack or you've had a heart attack, wouldn't it be nice to bypass? Mm -hmm. And so we started doing bypass graphs in the 70s when it became possible to do that without mm -hmm. harming people more than we helped them. Uh, there were problems. Uh, there were studies, some of which lasted over a decade, and with very rare exception, one particular subset, no one's ever been able to show that bypass grafts have saved a life. In fact, no one's been able to show that bypass grafts improve symptoms. While the surgeons were getting in inventive, and so were the cardiologists. They said, boy, we don't have to bypass these things. Why don't we just break them up? Put a mm -hmm. tube in the middle of your coronary artery with a balloon at the end and blow up the balloon, mm -hmm. and wouldn't that open it up? Mm -hmm. And so they started doing angioplasty. Now there are four trials comparing various forms of angioplasty with various forms of stents with medical therapy. And it turns out that compared to medical therapy, angioplasty with or without stenting has not been shown to save a life or improve symptoms. So exactly what are you talking about when you talk about medical therapy? 
Medical therapy it means that we don't invade the body, we use appropriate evidence-based medicines. So medical therapy includes such dramatic events as baby aspirin. Mm -hmm. And depending on a number of issues, maybe you'll get a, a, a kind of antihypertensive, a kind of drug that changes the way the heart contracts, mm -hmm. but these are pills. Mm -hmm. So they're pills, and if we compare in now five different settings where angioplasty is commonly mm -hmm. used with pills in those five settings, and we have large numbers of patients, thousand, where half of them are given angioplasty and half are given pills, what we learn is that um, the people given just the pills do at least as well, if not better, than mm -hmm. the people who had the angioplasty. have very good evidence, very good science, trying to show that cabbages bypass grafts and angioplasties in a number of settings of heart disease offer nothing. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, they belong in the historical archives of a good idea that didn't work. So this is something I think is hard for a lot of people to accept because you've had years of you know, television shows with heroic doctors doing bypass surgeries and then the, you, know, you see in the newspaper that oh, there's this amazing new stent or balloon that can treat someone who's having a heart attack. Um, and yet you're saying we have decades, literally, of evidence where there have been studies done on thousands of patients and there's not a shred of evidence that these procedures, these surgical procedures, work any better, save lives, alleviate symptoms any better than just medical treatment with pills and, and, and that sort of intervention. Yes, and what I'm also saying is that going forward, we, we should be taking advantage of this up front. And so we could completely stop doing those procedures right now. We, there would be people would have exactly the same quality and length of life who are experiencing these heart problems as long as they were able to get the same medical treatment. Yeah, that, don't misunderstand me. These are not always trivial problems. Mm -hmm. There would be people who would die and there would mm -hmm. be people who would have heart failure and there would be people who would have angina, chest pain, when the, and this would not be trivial. What I'm saying is that there would be the same numbers of people if mm -hmm. we had it, it without angioplasty and bypass graft as we do today with it. Mm 